Hi, welcome to Astro Babble. I'm Donna from Donna B Astrology. And I'm Linda from Scullywag Astrology. And today we are going to be talking about the 2023 horoscopes for Capricorn. So this is for Capricorn Ascendants. Uh, naturally, if you're a Capricorn Sun or Moon, you can listen along as well. But we find that by recommending that you read your Ascendant sign horoscope, that it's just more accurate. And we explain that in the video that I'll link to in the description. Okay, so starting off with the malefic planet, Mars is uh, known for aggression and fighting and uh, impatience, as well as bleeding and separation and burning. So this energy you've been working with for a while, it's uh, it was in your sixth house and you'll it'll be moving into your seventh house on uh, the 25th of March. So it's been it's been retrograde for the last and it will be have been in uh, this the sign for six, six, seven months. Yeah. A very long time for any planet to be residing in anywhere, especially, you know, one of the malefics. And uh, it'll go direct January 12th. It will end its uh, shadow period on March 15th, and then finally get out of that sign entirely for March 25th. So that will be very nice from moving from your sixth house into your seventh house. Need to watch out for um, aggression with the other, like the one other person, like whether it's a significant other or the one-on-one -on -one relationships, because that's where it's headed. It's going to get out of your house of illness and pets and um, co-workers, but it will be going into your house of the other. So that would yeah. be a energy to watch out for. It is. And Mars and Cancer, it's in fall. It's not in a strong position here. It's a very emotional Mars. Mars, like Donna said, aggression, impatience, anger, drive, ambition. It's also libido and it's courage. So with the malefics, Mars and Saturn, they have their good qualities too. So we find the best way to try and work with them is to try to kind of activate <clears throat> excuse me activate the higher qualities of it I suppose and with Mars it's often helpful if you can kind of channel that energy because Mars is very much about energy in an, another manner well a romantic partner anyway but seventh house is also business partners it's close friends as well and clients so physical activity is a great way to kind of channel that energy it's been in the sixth house, so it could have been causing trouble with uh, ill health, um, particularly with Mars being retrograde. So there could have been issues of, you know, you think you're over this and then, you know, you're back to square one sort of thing, which can be rather frustrating. It was retrograde from the 30th of October um, up until the it will be stationing direct um, the 12th January. So... But it's been in um, that sixth house of ill health since the 20th of August 2022. So it will be really nice to get it, even though it might cause some drama in your relationships. Uh, it will be nice to get it out of uh, at least the house of ill health in uh, late March. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not going to stay in that in that that seventh house for long. It's only no. going to be in there for six weeks, and then it's going to move on like it like it normally does. It was just causing a problem in your sixth house for a long time because that's the house it went retrograde in. Yeah. That's what made it stay to stay in there for a lot longer than it normally does. And so therefore could, you know, set up shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not a fun house <laughs> to have a malefic in. Um and, and Mars will move through other signs during 2023. We're not um, going in depth on that. If you follow along uh, with us on YouTube or the podcast or via Facebook, um, we do do full and new moon horoscopes and pay attention and let you know when planets change signs and when they're making significant aspects to other planets. This is just an overview. And we just wanted to address the fact that it's been in Gemini for so long and uh, we're making a big deal about it entering cancer because at least it won't be in Gemini anymore. Um, <laughs> yes, no matter where it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and that's at least one good thing about Mars. At least it only uh, retrogrades every two years. It's not a yearly event, so. 
very nice and very welcome to change. <clears throat> mm. The other malefic planet uh, that is in your chart is Saturn, and it will be entering Pisces. It's been in um, Aquarius for two years, two and a half years, and uh, March 7th, it's going to be moving into Pisces, and that will be nice. Um, it's It's been in your second house. Um, you know, not a, not one of your, it's the house of finance. So um, it, in, in Saturn causes restriction and, and no. So after when Saturn moves on into Pisces, March, after March 7th for 2023, you might feel a little bit um, loosening up on being able to spend the money that you wait the way you want to spend it because it's, it's been telling you no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we yeah. all know it's been telling you no. <laughs> yeah. I I've heard it said but too it that, you know, if you've kind of knuckled down and kind of done the work that when Saturn leaves the sign, it kind of kind of rewards you for that hard work. So if you've been focusing on finances or trying to increase income, uh, building up resources to help you, you know, maybe when this leaves it will actually uh hopefully leave you in a better position but yes Saturn moving into the third house this will be um siblings this will be your local neighborhood it will be transportation short distance travel uh communications um short courses and just yeah your local neighborhood so you might feel somewhat restricted or confined or somehow limited within these um, areas but as we are saying with Mars if you can use that Mars energy um, constructively the same applies with Saturn if you can use this to build and um, set a good foundation and you know construct something of value of that will last and sustain can you tell i'm not very good with satin <laughs> only because you love it so much you are just speechless i'm sure <laughs> that is the reason <laughs> yes yeah, satin satin, um, <laughs> satin's but, not kind yes. to people born at night Mm. Right. Saturn, Saturn can be problematic and challenging for sure. There's no, there's no doubt about it. Um, you know, I, I even, even though I'm born during the day, you know, Saturn has, you know, affected my life for sure. Um, but it, it's meant to, it's meant to give you that foundation. It's meant to give you that, sure. those things that you really don't want to have to have, you know, like, you know, vitamins and minerals or whatever you're, you know, your you know parents try to give you when you're little um you but eat so it's, it's like eating your vegetables it will if you do that it's good for you in the long run yeah and that's what saturn tries to mm. get you to do um it's not going to have the strength that it did before because it's moving out of its own rulership signs but um it'll be more mobile mm, more adaptable I was just thinking too, yeah. um, Saturn's often obligations and kind of duty in that too. And this is a house of siblings, but also extended family like cousins and um, aunts and uncles and that sort of thing. So, yeah, there could be maybe more responsibility or kind of issues regarding that family unit that says more responsibility there and, you know, Sometimes you just got to step up. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Good to know the energy that's coming towards you. So you know exactly how to plan for it. Mm -hmm. And Pluto has been, <laughs> it's been a long ball for a long time. It's a long throw. Um, <laughs> Pluto is uh, not a fast moving planet by any means. Uh, we've seen it. It's been in, um, it's been in Capricorn for all this time. It's going to enter Aquarius. It's uh, it, it should it, 
Pluto is the planet that's in, in it's it, it gets rid of the things that don't serve you any longer. It, it, it is meant to get get out the old. It's it's the planet of change. It's the planet of intensity. It's the planet of um, growth as far as the long the, the big picture is concerned. Uh, Pluto gets society to where it wants it to go. Yeah, and, uh, it is a generational yeah. planet, so it does affect everybody. But as it moves through the different uh, signs and the different degrees of the sign, it will make contacts to your individual chart. And, and that's where we kind of feel it most. But, you know, which house it's in, because, you know, it's it can be in a, a sign for anything from 14 to 30 years. So that's a long time in one place of your chart. And it takes 250 approximately years to go through the whole zodiac. So you're not going to have Pluto go through the whole of your chart in every house in your natal chart. It's probably going to be, I don't know, what, four or five. Just depends which signs it's going through at the time. But um, yeah. Pluto uh, has been in Capricorn since 2008. It's not done with this yet. It's going to um, retrograde back into Capricorn in June next year till January 2024. Uh, and then uh, in the 1st of September 2024 to 19th of November 2024, it's also going to be in Capricorn. So those with chart points like ascendant or mc or planets at late degrees of capricorn we're going to have to wait till 19th of november 2024 before we can wave goodbye to it and, and even when it's it gets into aquarius you know within a degree or so it's it's still going to be kind of yeah but yes and just because it moves um, we really shouldn't feel it as you know strongly. We it, it this you know Pluto is that planet that it kind of dips its toe back in and then it top you know it it like comes back out you know like the hokey pokey. It's kind of like in and out in and out for a little while until you kind of get used to what it's going to do. Yeah, most so planets... it, it shouldn't it shouldn't become a surprise to anybody what 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 Pluto is trying to do. It's been around. It was in this. It's been. It's been in Capricorn for this. I don't know, eighteen, twenty years <laughs> since two thousand and eight. So yeah. it's 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 energy that we're we're aware of, and and it just it has that same kind of moving energy to 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 get you to grow, you know, in a new part of of your life. And so we're going to be getting a little bits and tastes of it throughout this this coming year. Yeah. And uh, for Capricorn Ascendants, uh, Capricorn, you know, is obviously your first house, which is all about your health and vitality. It's your appearance. It's how others view you. It's kind of your personality. So all these things could be uh, undergoing changes or transformations. Um, yeah. So just interesting. When uh, Pluto enters Aquarius on the 23rd of March, 2023, it will be there till the 11th of June, uh, 2023. So we'll get a taste of what that will be like in Aquarius. And that's going to be in Capricorn Ascendant second house. So it's coming for your money. <laughs> Hopefully to improve it because um, right, cause it takes yeah. small things and makes them big. <laughs> or big things makes them small so yeah yeah <laughs> yeah small things and makes them big we're hoping but um it uh is transformative it does tend to uh tear down what's not working and rebuild better it, it can be it can be difficult though it can be hard while you're going through uh particularly a, a difficult like an opposition or a square or a conjunction of Pluto with a planet or chart point in your chart. Yeah, those are a bit stronger um, aspects. Yeah. Meant to, meant to say, I'm aware of you. 
that's what that opposition is. It's like, I am aware of you. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. What do they say? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. That's what they say. And as we're both breathing. <laughs> so we are all breathing easier because of Jupiter. Jupiter has been, um, it's, it's in Aries now. It will be moving into Taurus come uh, the middle of May. And Jupiter is all about expanse. It, it wants to expand. It's generous. It wants to make things bigger. This is a wonderful planet for, um, it's the greater benefic. So it does, it does bring on the, uh, the nice things in your life. And right now it's in your fourth house. It'll be moving into your fifth house. So the fourth house, you know, it's been making your home bigger. It's been making your, your lineage. Um, you might've gotten some gifts of some sort through your lineage, which would be, uh, that's where Jupiter is, is doing the work for you. And uh, it will go into your fifth house of creativity and children. So, and Jupiter is the planet of um, of babies. Uh, <laughs> I like to call it. It does. It does bring. It does bring children a lot of times. So this would be a great time to for those Capricorns who are maybe looking to get pregnant. This would be a good time for it. Yeah, it's going to be in the house for. Um, it's Jupiter is only going to be in two houses for you this coming year. It's in Aries right now, and then it'll go into Taurus. So the Taurus will give you more of the tactile type of, of benefit, I would think. Yeah. And, um, you know, generous, optimistic, enthusiastic, um, you know, this is the house, the fifth house includes socializing and, creativity, hobbies, sport, uh, also romance. And Jupiter can bring in the dual nature. So you might have a few uh, few to pick from. So that could be interesting. For those Capricorns who might pick. <laughs> who don't want the babies. <laughs> yes. Well, maybe they do. On the other benefic planet that we have in our skies is Venus and Venus will be, she moves around a lot, um, probably a sign every, every year she'll go into one right now. She's sitting in Capricorn. So this is, she's sitting in your house right now. And this would be a good time. Uh, if you're getting this before January 2nd to, you know, do that, the, the hair changing, the, you know, work on yourself, the things that you want to change and bring into your life. Venus is there to support it. Um, and, uh, come June, January 2nd, she'll be going into Aquarius, which is going to be your second house. And that's your, that's your house of finances. So she will be gifting you with, um, hopefully a raise at, at work or, uh, you know, this, the things that support you. Venus is known for that. She's the bright one in the sky. People get up early in the morning to look at her, um, Come January 26th, though, she'll be moving into your third house. She'll be exalted in this house. So, uh, you know, relationships with your siblings or cousins um, can be expected with with this kind of a, a house placement because she is the benefic um, and she'll be there until February 20th. And in at February 20th, she's going to be moving into your fourth house. This is a little bit more abrasive for her. She, uh, she'll be in Aries. So this is definitely enemy territory for Venus. She'll, she's not going to be at her, at her perfect strength, but it's still an opportunity to beautify your house, uh, um, get rewards, um, through, through family lineage, uh, would be all good aspects that you could expect. Now come March 16th, she's going to be moving into your fifth house. She, this is also one of her domiciles and the fifth house is the house of creativity, children, hobbies, um, affairs and, and quick, quick romance is, is the, is no, is notarized by, or notorious for the fifth house. <laughs> and that'll be from March 16th through April 11th. And she'll be in her own domicile. So good things should be expected. And this is her, her joy. Her joy. 
Yes. <laughs> She'll be very happy there. Yes, she will be. Um, so a really good time. I would, I would definitely put off some projects for, you know, April 11th to, or March 16th to April 11th. Cause that's gonna, you're gonna have that, that extra bit of goodness there. Um, come April 11th though, she's going to go into your sixth house in that house in Gemini. And although she's not out of, she's not in her own domicile, she, it's not really too bad of a place for her. This is a house of illness as well as pets, service to others, uh, a job that might um, require that you are hiring people. These would be all good things for Venus to have her hand in. As this is not a, a particularly good house, it is the house of illness, so do watch out for that. But it also is, I mean, if it's for, if it's the house of health, then you can, if you try to do the, um, you know, instill the the good uh, daily exercise, eating right, those kinds of things might be a good idea to incorporate into your life. Yeah. And from uh, the 7th of May to the 5th of June, Venus is going to be in Cancer in the 7th house. So this is your closest one-on-one -on -one relationships. So this is uh, significant others, romantic partners. This is also business partners, close friends, and it can can and it can include uh, client relationships. So these relationships should all be quite harmonious at the time. Venus and Jupiter, are, you know, benefic planets. Sometimes they're said to bring gifts or you know some sort of reward or you know sweeten things a little bit. So. Yeah, it's just a nice time for relationships during that uh, time. From the 5th of June to the 8th of October, Venus is going to be in Leo. And she's going to be in there for quite a few months because she's actually going to retrograde during that time. Venus is going to be retrograde from the 22nd of July to the 3rd of September. But if we take into account the retrograde shadow period, it will be... <clears throat> from the 19th of June to the 7th of October that we need to be kind of a little bit wary. When Venus is retrograde, we're reassessing or reevaluating matters to do with uh, Venus, such as our affections, our relationships, um, art, beauty, and our personal values. This will be happening in your eighth house, which is shared finances and resources. This can include, say, joint finances. It can include the partner's money. It could be loans, debts, inheritances. So, yeah, you may find that your views or opinions, your personal values regarding these matters are undergoing some sort of change. And, um, yeah, so that will be interesting. Just with Venus retrograde in general too, not usually a good time for starting a new romance. They don't tend to last the distance. So if you meet somebody new between 19th of June and 7th of October in 2023, it might not last the distance. There's always exceptions to the rule, but generally speaking, everybody at the same time is undergoing this Venus retrograde will be in different parts of different people's charts, but it's a time of flux for many people, personal values and issues to do with relationships and affections are undergoing change or reflection. So quite often when we come out of that retrograde period, you know, we've made some Maybe not huge, but um, small, but maybe significant changes. And then when Virgo, our October 8th, Vir um, Venus will be moving into Virgo, which is your ninth house. And this is the house of higher education, as well as your house of publishing. It could be the law and it could be foreigners. And you could um, you could start a relationship with somebody who is not from your area and uh 
yeah uh, and and it's and it's and as usual venus does bring the good stuff so um this is really good for uh the ninth house um october 8th or not october november 8th to december 4th uh, venus will be going into your 10th house of libra now she rules this house and this is the house of your career or what you are known for so this will be a good time to be looking for either um, recognition or a job promotion as well. Uh, this is a great house for Venus to be in. Um, then from December 4th to December 29th, Venus will be moving into the 11th house. Scorpio. She's not all that happy in Scorpio. Uh, she... It is in the, the sign of her, she'll be in the sign of her detriment. And uh, this is the house of hopes and dreams as well as friends and associations. Still, it not as benefic as she could be, but you would still expect to get good things through your friends, your hopes and dreams and, and that type of thing. Um, she'll then move into Sagittarius, December 29th. And that will be moving into her your 12th house. The 12th house is recognized by um, uh, seclusion, um, your own undoing, uh, inner work, as well as behind the scenes. So in Sagittarius, it's not exactly a good house because it's the 12th house and that's just not really a good house. It can't be seen by the ascendants. That's, that's what makes it a, a bad house. Um, but still, you should be getting some benefit from those activities of seclusion, of being hospitalized. It, you know, if it's if you are if you are going away, it, you know, use it for a positive um, growth. Yeah. That's going to happen from at, starting December 29th into the year. So, yeah, this is it's a good it's a good time. Um even though Venus will be hitting some of the bad houses for a lot longer, like the eighth and the 12th house, specifically the eighth house, mm -hmm. it's still, you would still expect to get good things coming from it. Yeah. Four eclipses for 2023, two in the spring and then two in the fall. The solar eclipses are indicative more of the things that are outward and what people can see. I, I I got a sunburn on solar eclipse that hit mm. my ascendant. Um, so you can definitely see that. Um, this will be happening April 29th at 29 degrees Aries. It'll be happening in your fourth house. And this is just starting to hit that axis, that fourth, 10th axis. Whereas you have been experiencing the eclipses, you know, from your 11th and 5th house. That's where they have been. The lunar one will finish off the series of eclipses that have been happening for the last 18 months. And it's going to be at 14 degrees Scorpio. So if you have planets around there, it might affect it more or affect you more. This will be happening on May 5th. And the lunar eclipses are more internal kind of a shift where the solar eclipses are more outward. Mm -hmm. And then you, there's another uh, solar eclipse, October 14th at 21 degrees Libra. And again, that's going to be, this is just beginning. This will be the second uh, eclipse in Libra for this um, series. Mm -hmm. uh, we did have one this last fall. And, but it's going to be in your 10th house. So you would expect to see some changes or some themes that about 18 years ago, it was you were going through kind of these same kind of questions or concerns. And then for October 28th, there's going to be a lunar eclipse on uh, five degrees of Taurus. So that's going to, as well, again, reflect more internally and more internal changes and themes. Yeah. Um, finishing up that fifth house, 11th house axis, which is groups, friends, organizations, hopes and dreams, and, um, children creativity romance fun all those really nice things and moving into more work and career or public reputation and family so yeah interesting 
Uh, Donna was saying, you know, particularly with solar eclipses, they do come around at a similar place every 18 years. So 18 years ago takes us back to about 2005. So uh, eclipses can kind of, you know, upset the apple cart a little bit, kind of sudden, just unexpected changes can, you know, set you on a different course sometimes. So, yeah, it could be interesting. It could be change of career or house move or something similar for some people coming up. 2023 horoscope uh, for Capricorn. I'm a Capricorn ascendant, so... <laughs> um yes but uh yeah hopefully it's good i'm i'm planning on it being a really good one so mm. i'm an airy son yeah. so what am i going to do <laughs> you just got to be optimistic um yeah it's not so bad and you know we're coming out of that uh, pluto in our ascendant eventually in a couple of years so mhm mm but, um, yeah, me and Donna do new moon and full moon horoscopes every couple of weeks. We address what planets are moving into new signs, all the aspects between the new moon and the full moon, all the major ones anyway. We don't do the lunar aspects, but what uh, other planets are doing, interacting with each other. And, uh, yeah, eclipses, we, you know, do... Uh, podcast on the eclipses so if that's something that interests you please consider subscribing um a like would be great or comments we're getting some comments in they're really interesting um it's quite fascinating actually so hmm. and donna I've been reading them as well donna where are you and what services are you offering Okay, you can uh, contact me at donnabeastrology.com. Uh, that's my website, and there's contact information there. And I am doing natal readings, uh, year ahead readings, as well as electional readings, horary readings. And I do work with stones. Um, stones. <laughs> to uh, What was that and, one? And, that and one was support, really cool. What was the first support one? Support of healing. Oh, it's a septarian. That's pretty. <laughs> I like I've it. been working with it. I've been, I've, I've have a, a very hard class I've been doing. So I've been working with this one. Um, it's very Jupiterian. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, I've been, I do that. The, the, I work with stones as far as, um, supporting health and, uh, mental health as well. And you can get a hold of me at my website and Linda, what are you doing and where can people get a hold of you? I'm at Scullywag Astrology. That's astrology.scullywag.com. And I do natal readings. I do relationship readings and year ahead readings. So thank you for listening. Wonderful. And uh, we hope that 2023 is wonderful for you. Be near your Capricorn. Ciao. Thank you.